Hello friends and welcome to our service today. Uh, our service is coming to you pre-recorded. Our actual live service is going to be outside in the yard at the church on Sunday and we can't do live streaming from outside. So I wanted to provide this for you, our online audience. Copies of the bulletin can be found on the YouTube comments section underneath the viewing window. I want to wish all moms a happy Mother's Day. It is a time when we all can celebrate the women in our lives. We're starting our service today with a special video celebrating mothers. Take a look. And a very, uh, very special Happy Mother's Day to you. We're going to continue our service today with our call to worship. It's in a form of an opening prayer, uh, and, a lit and this is printed on the bulletin, uh, so please follow along with me. Let us pray. Loving God, we praise you for Christ, the light of the world. Clothe us in the Spirit's light so that each day we are people who boldly love our neighbor. Help us to hear your call to love now. Allow us to love with courage and faith. In Christ Jesus, Amen. Going to continue our worship today with two praise choruses. I will call upon the Lord and days of Eliza, Elijah. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved from my enemy. be saved from my enemy. I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? Who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved so from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the 
days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sore, still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. So lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, not a Zion's hill, salvation comes. And these are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David, rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as wide in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. So lift your voice, it's the year of jubilee. Out of Zion's hill salvation comes Behold he comes Riding on the clouds Shining like the sun At the trumpet call So lift your voice It's the year of jubilee And out of Zion's hill salvation comes Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Some are moms, some are grandmas, some are aunts, but today we honor them and who they were and what they've done, what they're still doing. I thought about my mom when I was thinking about Mother's Day. You know, my mom, she had a certain way about things. And I'd like to tell you about my mom. One of the things when I think about my mom, um, one of the things I thought about that I wanted to show you this morning is this. You know what this is? Oatmeal. This is what I had for breakfast most of the time. Oatmeal and orange juice. I'd have much rather had chocolate milk and a donut. But nope, this is what my mom gave me. Why? Because my mother loved me. And she wanted me to grow up strong and healthy. So oatmeal was coming around in the morning, whether I liked it or not. Something else that reminds me of my mom are books. You know, other children, when they got home from school, they got to play outside sometimes. I got to do that sometimes too, but, and watch TV and do all kinds of different things. You know what my mom made me do? Get out the books. Get out the homework. Do the homework before I could do anything else. Why? Because my mother loved me. And she knew that a good education would be something that I could use forever. She wanted the best for me. I still read, so thank you, Mom, for that. Something else that reminded me of my mom is this, a clock. My mom had to know every second of every part of the day exactly where I was. If I wanted to stay at someone's home or do something different, I had to ask permission. I had to tell her when, where, all of that. Even way when I was old enough to figure things out, she still insisted that I had to tell her where I was. Why? Because my mom loved me and she wanted me to be safe, always safe. The last thing, probably the thing that reminds me of my mom, it, sometimes we get kind of negative thoughts from. You know what this is? Yeah. 
You know, I don't think my mother ever heard about child labor laws because we had to do dishes at the house. We had to keep our room clean. I had to, um, I grew up on a farm, so there were numbers of farm chores to do. Yeah. This wasn't my best friend, but it's something that reminds me of my mom. Why? Because my mom loved me. And she wanted me to learn to have that a happy family is a family that works together. You know, I had a family, my family, with seven children. Lots of things to do. And thank you, Mom. I taught my children, too, that we're a community and we work together. My mom isn't here anymore. She's in heaven. And I wonder if she isn't up there telling the angels what to dust off and where to be and what to do. I always thought that maybe I was being mistreated. That I didn't always want oatmeal and certainly didn't want homework. Didn't always like to tell her where I was going or what I was doing. And nobody likes those chores at the end of the day. But she did all of those things because she loved me and she wanted me to have a life that was filled with good things and love. That is what moms do. And today we need to honor them. It says in the Bible uh, from Proverbs 1.8, Listen to your father's instruction. Yes, you should be listening to dad. And do not forsake your mother's teaching. That is what moms do. Why? Because they love us. They teach us. So, sometimes when you think you're being treated unfairly, your mom has a good plan. She does all of those things because she loves you. Take the time today to tell your mom or your grandma or anybody else who's ever taught you the things of has taught you things that help you now thank them and thank God for those people in your life let us pray oh Lord today we honor moms I thank you, Father, first for the one I had because it was obvious that you loved me. Help us to remember that um, moms have to teach us in certain ways. Sometimes we don't always see how that's a good thing, but they do it because they love us. Help us to remember to love them back, to listen to them, and to appreciate what they are teaching us. We thank you, Lord, for the families we have. We thank you, Lord, for all those women in our lives who have taught us and helped us. And we thank you, Lord, that you provided them, that you love us, that you care for us. And we, we ask you to bless the moms of, um, the moms we have today that are still with us. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys have a good day. And make sure your mom has an especially good day. See you later. So our scripture reading today comes from John 15, 9 through 17. As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer, because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends, because everything I heard from my Father I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, 
but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit and so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love one another. The word of the Lord for the, or the, well, the word of God for the people of God. So um, a middle school English teacher asked her class one day to write imaginative definitions of a friend. And one student said, a friend is a pair of open arms in a society of armless people. Another said, a friend is a warm bedroll in a cold and frosty night. Others said, a friend is a lively polka in the midst of a dreary musical concert. What? No rock and roll? A friend is a mug of hot coffee on a damp, cloudy day. A friend is a beautiful orchard in the middle of the desert. A friend is a stiff drink when you've just had a terrible shock. How does a middle schooler know that? A friend is a hot bath after you have walked 20 miles on a dusty road. All of these are lovely thoughts. Mark Twain said, The holy passion of friendship is of so sweet and steady and loyal and enduring a nature that it will last through a whole lifetime if not asked to lend money. Friendship. Friendship is clearly a wonderful thing. So we are in the beginning of the love chapters of the Gospel of John. It is in John that we see Jesus taking the role of a servant as he washed his disciples' feet. As I have done this, do also for each other. Love was one of the was the last theme or message from Christ before the cross and resurrection. As the Father has loved me, he said, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. And if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. So we're going to look at three different questions this day. And the first question is, so where does love come from? Now, some of you would answer, well, that's easy. It comes from within. It's something that happens naturally as we mature as human beings. Well, is that true? I'm not sure. Little babies are the most lovable creatures in the world, but that doesn't mean that they're born full of love and a kind spirit. Don't let those innocent smiles fool you. If they had that kind and loving, if they were that kind and loving, they wouldn't wake you up at four in the morning demanding to be fed or changed. The truth is that small babies are born totally self-centered. That doesn't mean they're bad. Babies aren't bad by nature. They're simply totally helpless. In order to survive in this world, they must make their needs known. If you meet those needs, then a baby will probably grow to love you. But is that really love? We say that children have to be taught to hate, but isn't that true of love as well? Think how difficult it is to teach a child to share. Is it really something that happens naturally? Is it something that comes from within? Or is it something we learn as infants and then as children? First of all, from our primary caregivers and then from those around us. C.S. Lewis, a famous author, and you might know him from the Chronicles of Narnia, in his study of various Greek words for love, came to distinguish between what he called need love and gift love. Need love should be self-evident. It is the most common kind of love in our world. I love you because you meet my needs. It might be that my self-esteem is boosted when I'm with you, or it might be simply my need to be loved. Most of us have a need for companionship. Need love is always born of emptiness. The person characterized by need love is always grasping to attain from others, thing, others things or values which he or she covets. Lewis contends many times that we humans say to another, when we humans say to another, I love you, what, what we are really meaning is, I need you, I want you. You have a value that I very much desire to make my own, no matter what consequence may be to you. Now contrast need love with what Lewis calls gift love. Instead of being born of emptiness or lack, this form of loving is born of fullness. The goal of the gift love is to enrich and enhance the person whom we love rather than to extract value from them. Gift love moves out to bless and to increase rather than to acquire or diminish. Gift love is more like a bountiful artesian well that continues to overflow than a vacuum or a black hole. Lewis concludes that is what God's love is all about. In other words, God's love is gift love, not need love. There is a Greek word for that kind of love. It is called agape love. 
<clears throat> Are we capable of agape love, that is, loving as God loves? To a certain extent we are, but this does not happen naturally for human beings. For us to substitute give love for need love, we must go to the source of love, and the source of all love is God. Jesus says in our lesson for today, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Love then doesn't come from within, it comes from above, unless, of course, God lives within us. Later in his first letter, John will unpack this truth further when he writes, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Where does love come from? It comes from God. John continues, Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So that's the answer to the first question. Where does love come from? It comes from God. Then John adds, adds, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So then this brings us to our second question for the day. What does love look like? Well, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. I read that one occasion when Sadhu Sundar Singh and a companion were traveling through a pass through a Himalayan mountains. At one point they came across a body lying in the snow. Sundar Singh wished to stop and help the unfortunate man, but his companion refused, saying, We shall lose our lives if we burden ourselves with him. But Sundar Singh would not think of leaving the man to die in the ice and snow. And as his companion made his farewell, Sundar Singh lifted the poor traveler on his back. With great exertion on his part, he bore the man onward, but gradually the heat from Singh's body began to warm up the beleaguered frozen fellow, and he revived. Soon both were walking together side by side. Catching up with his former companion, they found him dead, frozen by the cold. In the case of Sundar Singh, he was willing to lose his life on behalf of another, and in the process, he found it. But in the case of his companion, who sought only his own well-being, he only lost it. We are to love others as he have loved us, not with need love, but with gift love, not because of anything they can do for us, but because of what Christ has done for us. The world says, scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Christ says, to do good for people who are incapable of, of doing anything in return for you. That is gift love, agape love, is the love of God. And that brings us to the final thing to be said about love today. Where does love come from? What does love look like? And then the third question is, what does love require from us? Jesus answers that question in our text. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. We don't often think of Jesus issuing commands, but he does here. This is my command, Jesus says. Love each other. Where does love come from? It comes from God alone. What does it look like? It looks like a man hanging on a cross in our behalf. What does such love require out of us? It requires us to move beyond need love to gift love, to look around at others who are in need of God's love and give it to them, not asking what they can do for us, but remembering what Christ has done for us. This is my command, Jesus said to his disciples and also to us love each other. Amen. So now we are going to um, look at our birthdays for this uh, week. Uh, we have a couple birthdays to celebrate. Brittany Peterson has a birthday. Cheryl Kendall, Michael Russler, Tim Schock, and Calvin Schock all have birthdays. So happy birthday to them.
I would also like to uh, remind you that uh, giving is a part of worship and you can there are several ways that you can support our ministries. Uh, you can send an offering to the um, church through that post office box number there and the address. Uh, you can give online and there's the direction to get to our website there. Uh, if you are in the area, you can also pick up those pre-addressed envelopes uh, in the little containers by the front doors of each of the churches if you'd like to do it that way. So let us pray the prayer of dedication together as it is printed there in your bulletins. Let us pray. How privileged we are, O God, to be included in your great and eternal kingdom. It thrills us to know that you value us and our resources sufficiently to use them for your eternal purpose of restoring wholeness to a broken world. In the name of Jesus, we ask that our offerings may bring healing and wholeness according to your good purposes. Amen. We have a closing song today. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Thanks for being with us today. I uh, look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Until next time, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>